As a machinery retailer, we take back in part exchange many different types of machinery, from the weird, the wacky and the wonderful. But sometimes, just sometimes, we're fortunate enough to see something a little bit special. Something that's been sat at the back of someone's shed for longer than it hasn't. Something that if our industry made posters, this would have certainly been on my wall as a child. That's right, we've part exchanged a Boland's Husky 600. This golden oldie was produced between 1962 and 1965 and was a pioneer in its day in the subcompact garden tractor category. Originally, it would have been fitted with a 32 inch underslung deck underneath and had many other attachments you could get, including snow blowers, snow plows, other rear attachments as list as long as your arm to be able to put behind it for tillage and plowing and other operations. So as you can see, this pup has seen better days. The original mowing deck has unfortunately probably by now been turned into a washing machine and was originally fitted with a six horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine, but as in more recent times has been refitted with an eight horsepower Briggs instead. Good solid engine. They've managed to keep the fuel tank. They've managed to keep some other bits and pieces on it, including the starter motor that's on this side. But unfortunately, they refitted a different exhaust cover and air filter housing. So they had to make a bit of a modification on the bonnet here on the right hand side. The good news is we're gonna restore this little gem back to as near perfect condition as we possibly can budget depending. But before we do that, we're going to see if she starts, runs, smokes or pokes. Make sure that the engine's working, the gearbox is working, make sure that we can actually justify doing this restoration. She's going to need new tyres, she's going to need shot blasting, repainting, sorting out, the, we don't even know if the engine runs yet or not, and going back through it. So we've got some spare parts here that came off the deck originally, and some lots of linkages down here that have been replaced but we're going to probably strip all that off and just keep it as a standard basic tractor as a little tug for around the garden. But let's see how we get on and let's go and see if she runs. So we've got our little Boland Husky 600 here in our little studio workshop. We're going to run through the machine to see if we can just get it going today, see what's wrong with the engine, see if we can just stick some fresh fuel in it, a new battery and get it to run, or see if she, what life she's got in her. Um, and then just go from there, see what, see what we can find. And if we've got a little bit of life, see if we've got the gearbox working, We'll then take it further and start stripping it down. But let's see what we've got. So the bonnet on these have got a nice, obviously full steel bonnet. There's no plastic on these old machines from the 1960s. Take the bonnet the catch off here a second. Try and, oh, that's easier than I thought. So you can let this one down. Like so, so we've got an industrial plus eight horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine, which well, according to the registration plate, that is a 97 made machine. So this engine was replaced probably late 90s, early 2000s. And um, so what the original starter motor on there and the original fuel tank, like I said before, the, there's a replacement air filter and a housing there and the replacement exhaust. The fuel tank still got the original metal cap on there, which looks in pretty good shape. Fuel. Fuel smells a little bit tangy. What you'd expect from a machine which hasn't been used for several years. The spark plug is very, very grubby. So we'll probably replace, replace that one as well. But I think first things first, let's put a new battery on it to see if we've got any life at all. A bit of investigation earlier on about the mower. And if our cameraman can come over here and have a look at this. The mower was actually reasonably local to us. It was originally supplied by someone called Henry Kelland and Company back in the 60s. And with a little bit of investigation, that's now under a different name, but based in Bridgewater, only about an hour and a half away from us. So for the seams of it, this mower hasn't actually traveled a great distance in its life, whereas some mowers we do see have traveled miles and miles. So hopefully this battery will fit. It's got a 895 battery and should slip in there quite nicely. We've already charged it in the workshop to make sure it's all ready to go. We've got there, we have, might work out better if I work out what, oh, well, that's the earth lead, that's fairly obvious. Just literally grounded to the side casing there on that little nut and bolt. Hopefully we've got enough to reach over to the other side, even if it's only temporary, at least it will let us show, you, show us what we've got in the old girl. Already want an 896 battery in here instead of an 895 with the terminals the other way around, but this will do for the time being. The most common battery we fit is probably an 896, but this is an 895. Fairly common on most garden lawnmowers. These are just two 10mm nut and bolts. 
which I was expecting to be three eighths, being the age of the machine, but probably they've been replaced at some point. It's on there. So let's try and work out what everything does. So Mr. Cameraman, what's come over here? What we've got on the front, got our choke levers, being that it's been a replacement engine. We've got our choke there and we've got our throttle there. So they have been wired in. Come around back to the other side here. That choke one now at the front, that is the choke. Still sort of works, but doesn't work on its own. It needs a little bit of assistance. So if we put that up to choke and then the throttle, is that, no, that one's seized. Oh, no, it does work. It's got a little bit of life there. Put that up to the top. There we go. And we'll see. Just check the oil. Make sure there's still some goodness left in her. Yeah. Plenty in there for what we want to do for the time being. So that's fine. Well, let's see if she's got life. Before we put any fresh fuel and drain that out, let's see what she's got in her. So on and off, I'm presuming is that little switch on the right hand side and then we've got our start button oh hello <laughs> well the start motor works that's exciting all right is the the size of it. studio is filling up with smoke so but we've got to run in it works it starts the engine sounds pretty good though it doesn't seem to be coming off choke very well it seems like it's over revving a little bit but let's um let's get her outside and see what's see what we can make of it see if she can make a run make us make a dry cool so our throttle the reason why it's racing away when i take it off choke is the throttle linkage isn't joined on and this is just floating in the wind so we're missing something that's going to the governor to be able to adjust our revs because, but good news, it's running on the old fuel, on the old spark plug. God knows how many years ago this has last started. And yeah, looking promising. I want to be able to let the revs down a little bit so that I can see if she drives. Otherwise I'm probably just going to wheelie and end up on my ass. So let's see if we can work that out. All right, so I'm going to try and... Don't run away with me, please. I don't really want the engine that runs away. See if it drives. Try again. Look at that! Sweet. Sweet as a cherry. 
time ago. Reverse. There we go. First star. Where am I going to go forward? We've got reverse. Forward. got an engine that works on 10 year old stale fuel. It's obviously back when they used to be able to make fuel. Um, it's on the old Champion plug. It's all working fine. All we've done is put a new battery on it and started her up. Engine is working like a dream with a little bit of fiddling on the linkage down there, which still needs a bit of playing with, but we've got it working for the time being. Um, and we've sort of got reverse gear and we've sort of got a little bit of forwards, but the belt is old and God knows what else is seized back through, but I was I haven't mentioned it, but there's a massive leak on the gearbox back there. So it might just be a case of fluid or something like that, but we'll dig into it. Let's go and have a look. I'm quite positive. The engine is sweet as that, which is a bit of a shame because I was looking forward to an engine rebuild, but instead let's do the difficult bits where we're gonna struggle to find any bits or anything for it. But we'll have a go, take it apart and go from there. So there's neutral, and then you've got yeah, that's first, first, second, third. So everything seems to be moving okay underneath. If I put it, put it in reverse, which is that one up there. See, that one's moving at the same time, which maybe it's supposed to, I don't know. I can then, yeah, there's resistance on there. If I put that back into, into neutral, I can turn the shaft. There we go. First neutral. So I can turn that quite easily. And then pull it back into reverse and yeah, and I've got fact is everything seems to be locking in and going in gear. One way or another. But for some reason it's not driving back up here. Pulley above or pulley on the engine comes off the crank, comes down to this one here. So that spins. That. And then it goes onto the shaft going back through there, straight into that gearbox. Obviously, as you can see here, we've got a lot of weeping mess. So, I guess we've got a seal gone in up here. I don't think it seems wet down the bottom, but obviously, trace the oil back up through. It looks like it's coming out here where the main shaft goes into the gearbox. So, it's going to be a case of stripping that gearbox down and seeing what's going on so we can find an oil seal that will fit in there. Shouldn't be an issue. Push the brake down. All the brake seems to be working. That one neutral. And the brakes are on here. See the brake there, look. Coming on through. It goes straight on top. Other shaft comes out the engine. And then there's actually left another one here on the clutch system. There, so that comes down and knocks that out. But at the same time, that one knocks the clutch out up here inside. So if you push that down, it releases the belt tension up on that pulley. So you've got reverse there, first, and then back to neutral, second, and third. And then you've got your PTO engagement clutch there, which would have been for the mowing deck when that used to be on it. And if you look down in here, You'll see that when I push the clutch down, that releases the tension on the, you've got the main pulley here coming off the crankshaft and then that belt there. So when I was using my hand then just now, obviously this spring here has seen better days, which is the spring which pulls everything back up again. But looks like it needs replacing with something else. It pulls everything back up tight on the clutch. So that seems to be where the issue is. Got a little bit of belt squeal. Obviously all the pulleys are really rusty and everything's all binding up. We just need to find out why we haven't got drive for the back axle, but we're going to 
strip it all apart and find and see what we can find. So three bits of good news. One, we've given her a name. We've called her Precious. Whether that's right or wrong, we should call a tractor something quite as so cute as that. But anyway, that's what it's stuck with. It's called Precious at the moment. The other thing, you'll see we've just given her a good wash. But we might as well just stick her through the pressure washer and get off the worst of it that we could. So we've done that. The other thing, do a bit of research last night. I have found, hopefully, the reason why it's not driving. So on the back of the tractor down here, there is a little pin which goes into the rear wheel. I thought that that was a diff lock, but it turns out that's what locks it into drive. So hopefully that pin is quite seized. He's in there fairly solid, but we're going to um, try and put that pin back in place and then we're going to take her outside again and fingers crossed it drives. If not, then we'll look into it further, but let's do that. See how we get on. Oh, while we're there, we're also going to take off this um, rather lovely gate hanging that someone's used as a hitch instead of the proper one, which obviously must have broke years ago. We can also then get to the oil plug there to be able to see if there is actually any oil left in it because as you can see from underneath, it's still coming out. But so there's that seal gone obviously, but we'll um, work that out later on. But let's just see if we can get a driving first. So at least we can um, make a bit of a plan. All right, let's do that and we'll see how we get on. Yeah, so someone's used this gate hang in here to be able to obviously hitch on a trailer or something. They've used the original holes, but they drill some extra ones in the hanging to be able to put it on there. But we'll get this off and make up something better for it. Something more fitting and suitable to its original, to its original one. But so, oh, oh dear. Oh, that's lots of oil coming out of there. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Let's put that back in there, I think. Oh dear. Just screw that. So on the bright side, we've still got some oil in it. Not so good, my socket's rolled away. So I don't know if that's supposed to come out of there or not really, but I guess so. A bit of an odd place for oil to come out of. Let's just do that back up tight. There we go, cool. Right, let's see if she's got some oil in it. Grab a socket, I'll put that one back in as well just so we don't lose that one. I know what I'm like with my nuts, they're always going all over the place. So if oil pours out of here, that's not right. But that's your fill level. This is where you put the oil in on the, oh, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. What's going on here, James? I have a feeling the fill level is supposed to be there. So if someone either topped this up too full of oil, or I've got my information wrong. One of the two. Go back to the drawing board with regards to, oh, another bit of good news is I found the original manual for this tractor. I found it online, downloaded it, printed it off. It's not very clear, but that's where I found out the information about this, about the old um, pin there, the um, freewheeling hub, as they want to call it. So I found out about that, but I don't think there's supposed to be that much oil in there. So hence why that seal up there, let's, let's get that pin sorted and try and get it to dry. All right, got some lube here somewhere, as if by magic. Spray that in there. Get it in round. Get that a bit of a knock. So apparently, we have a hammer and punch. Hmm. 
Huh. Not as easy as I thought it was. We have a pin. Ooh. Nice and rusty. Let's get this lined up. What floats and what doesn't here. Yeah. So if I go around like that. And line that up to that. And then my little finger that fits. There we go. Pop that one in there. Something snapped off there. So it looks as though let's get a bit more light on that. So yeah, the casting of the freewheeling hub looks like that used to go into there and lock in. But if you look there, there's a bit of rough metal there. So the casting's actually come off. So that's going right through to where it needs to, which is good. So it's now locked in, but there's nothing stopping that coming back out. So we'll need to come up with some sort of contraption for that to stop that happening. I think now we'll um, wipe up our puddle that we seem to have left on down and then um, push her outside and see if we've actually got some gears. If not, then we've got to take off this mud guard, take off the mud fender, fenders, mud guards, what you want to call them. There's a little tool tray at the back, four bolts there on the back. And then the seat should come off as well. That one would come off there. And then there's this big plate which runs from back there all the way to the front. Take that off, which old deck in a bucket gear stick will come out as well and um, hopefully we can then look right in on top of the good old cog box gearbox transmission whatever you want to call it right so let's try and get the engine started again and see if we can get her to go forwards or backwards or some sort of motion just give us some in precious we need it right so how do we start it ah. right bit of chokage that's that way and then on on that switch then you go push button start. One gear, we have one. That's like 20 to 5 percent of the gears we have. Now reverse. We have reverse gear. Reverse is good. Gear two. Oh, no. We have two gears. That's one, two, that's uh, three gears in total. Yeah. <laughs> we've got 100%. That's four gears. Oh, well, we've got four gears. Follow me, Mr. Cameraman. We're going for a drive. Quite fast. Feel the wind in my hair and everything. Put my glasses on just in case I meet any other road users. Good. Good, we're going to turn it. It works. Look at this beautiful machine. We just go all day, and they're waving to our passersby. <laughs> Brakes work as well. Yeah, they do. Hang on, let's, let's try backwards. <laughs> working we got we got 100 percent of the gears all four of them three fours and one reverse um the engine works the gearbox works i don't know what's going on with the oil we'll have a look at that later it's fine and um yeah so i think we're good to go on a full restoration see if we can get her back to looking like she should have or did 
however many years ago, how many is that, 50 years? Nearly 50, 47, 47 years ago. This was made, 47, 57, I'll work that out. Anyway, we are, we've got a working Boland Husky 600. It starts, it drives, it smokes and it pokes. And yeah, let's see where we take this going forward. We're gonna get it stripped down, take it all down, get it sorted, get it looking like a golden oldie like she should. See how we go. So we've had a bit of a play with her, she's getting a bit warm, but nice, I've worked out a bit of a foot for all. We've got a bit of a foot we put there on the governor, and sounds like a cherry. Listen to her. Not exactly the dumb thing, but solid, fast. Anyway, I'm being a bit like a kid with this, so we're going to, um, have a little bit more of a drive before we start taking it apart. Just, you've got to make the most of it while it still works. Know me, when I put it back together, it won't work. So, let's make the most of it. Third gear, let her out gently. Now we're away. And off we go. So that's the end of part one, guys. We've got to work in. Let's, um, well, we'll see you in part two. See what we've done, see what we're going to do. We'll work out a bit of a plan. Thanks, Wayne.